He was stubborn and seldom paid attention to others' opinion. He aspired to be independent, even in trivial matters. For example, in his youth, he refused to wear straight collarettes, wide ties, and fashionable long frock coats that hindered steps. He created his own fashion that made him feel comfortable. People turned around, watching him in a tight sports suit, in an open collar shirt, and a cap cocked. His utter disregard for the commoner's opinion, combined with persistence and courage, helped Friedrich Nansen to make outstanding discoveries. He was born on October 10, 1861, into a large family of Norwegian lawyer. His father, Balder Nansen, maintained strict discipline at home and brought up his children in Spartan spirit. Friedhoff was sent to study in one of the country's best schools. He was never a top student, and he preferred only physics and chemistry among the subjects. At the age of 15, Friedhoff experienced his first big tragedy. His mother, Adelaide, died. His father moved the family to the capital, where after considering the prospects for a lengthy period, Friedhoff entered the zoology faculty at the University of Oslo. At the age of 21, upon recommendation of his zoology professor, Nansen went out into the sea for the first time, sailing the Arctic Ocean to learn about Arctic animals. While drifting, he had seen Greenland, and that predetermined his destiny. During the next two years, in his thoughts, he traveled to that mysterious land again and again. In 1884, being a laboratory assistant of the Natural History Museum in Bergen, Nansen declared intention to cross Greenland on ski. It was such a risky plan that neither government nor Academy of Sciences, which Nansen had approached for financial support, approved it. Nevertheless, Friedhoff began to prepare for the expedition. The Norwegian scientists did not have trust in the success of his expedition, so they allowed Nansen to defend, which in their opinion, a weak thesis, and granted him a doctor's degree ahead of time. It was as though giving a gift to a man who doomed himself to death. On July 17, 1888, 27-year-old Nansen, with a set of volunteers, stepped to the Iceland. Travelers went on ski for three long months, suffering from cold, thirst, and starvation. And still in September of 1888, his command had successfully finished transition, during which it had been established that Greenland was the island covered with ice. After the campaign, all the world had started talking about Nansen, but not as much the scientist, but as the person who had shown tremendous physical endurance. Friedhoff did not need such glory, and he decided to set out on one more campaign, this time to the North Pole. But in 1889, an important thing happened in Nansen's life, which made him back out from his campaign plans. He fell in love. Friedhoff met Eva Sars while ski walking. She was a famous chamber singer, the daughter of an eminent zoologist. Before meeting with Eva, Nansen had already gone through some tumultuous romances, one of which almost led to marriage, but he had never fallen in such deep love before. In spite of the fact that Friedhoff had officially broken off with the church, for the sake of Eva, he had arranged a magnificent wedding on all church canons. Soon after marriage, Nansen started preparations for an expedition. He instructed a special ship named Fram, with the help of private donations. The ship was capable to sustain friction and compression of ice. In 1893, the team started the expedition, but after six months, the ship was caught in ice, and Nansen decided to use sleds with harnessed dogs to reach the North Pole. He passed 1,000 kilometers to a place where no man had ever entered and arranged wintering on Franz Joseph land in a hut made of stones and ice blocks. In 1896, Friedhoff Nansen, who had been derided for his plans by all scientists of Norway four years ago, returned home a hero. He was welcomed by the king. In Albert Hall, where he took the floor to speak about the expedition results, thousands of people rose in applause. Nansen did not take any long campaigns anymore, although he thought of expeditions to the South Pole. He was back to Eva, who had given birth to their five children later on. 
He became a professor of zoology at the University of Christiania, created fund for support of scientific researches. Friedhoff explored the Norwegian Sea and island Spitsbergen on his own schooner. He published a six-volume report about his discoveries, wrote some popular books devoted to Eva, to the woman who had courage to wait, and in 1911 issued fundamental work on research of the North. Later on, Nansen took an interest in politics and was appointed as ambassador of Norway in England, where his wife died. Friedhoff could not reconcile himself to this loss up to the end of the days. After death of his wife, Nansen devoted himself to public work. He was elected as a chairman of Assembly of Nations League, organized campaign to help starving children of the Soviet Volga region. In 1922, Nansen Friedhoff was awarded the World Nobel Prize. In May 1930, 69-year traveler died peacefully in his estate in the presence of his children. The last years of the life of this incorrigible dreamer were spent thinking over the expeditions to the North Pole by balloon.